You just can't get enough of AI powered ideas for creating radio content. And that's a good thing because I just so happen to be Jeff, the radio DJ dude, and I'm uncorking another idea based on a previous video I did where I shared this auto magic workflow with AI created weather reports. We're gonna leverage the foundation of that workflow to create something brand new. It's a totally rad trivia segment that I use on my station, Triple X 80s, only the most righteous internet 80s station. So if you're ready for this AI adventure, well, get in touch with your inner bot and let's go. We are on the air. Now I get it, you AI trivia fans are going nuts. You're jumping up and down. You can't wait another second. So put your ear on Triple X 80s totally cheesy trivia segment. Totally cheesy trivia. With me, Triple X 80s very own AI Valley Girl. The opening of a crate and revealing a leg lamp is a pivotal scene in what 1983 holiday classic movie? And my 80s lovers, the answer is. A Christmas Story. Triple X 80s. In all its glory, there you have it. So we're going to break this thing down. I'm going to show you how I put it together and how I used an AI-based workflow to totally expedite the process. Now, before you flame me in the comments below, I get it. It doesn't sound 100% human. And that's why I named her my AI Valley Girl. So it kind of lowers the audience's expectations. But as long as the bit is fun and your listeners get something out of it, I think they'll give you a pass. Or you could ditch the AI voice altogether and use those scripts on your own. You or one of your DJs could record that voiceover. And this workflow would still save you a bunch of time. So you're going to need three apps to pull this off. First, Make.com, an incredible site that allows you to create automated workflows. For the AI voices, we're using 11 labs for two reasons. One, they're pretty high quality. And two, they actually interface with make.com with an API. That's key. And a random newcomer, which I hope you could find. It's a company called uh, Goggle. Uh, Google, that is. As long as you have a Google account, you can access Drive, Sheets, and Docs. So the road before us includes seven steps. You got to source it, scrape it, sheet it, make it, script it, voice it, and then broadcast it. First up, let's source it. And by that, I mean, you got to go find some trivia questions. Since Triple X 80s is all 80s all the time, baby, my voyage of exploration landed me on this page. 80s trivia questions, tons of them. But if you run a 70s stations, not a problem. Check this out. A bevy of juicy options to choose from. Let's pop back to my situation. This was the link that first caught my eye. And this was the picture that sealed the deal. Beautiful. So the one thing I liked about this page, it had 139 questions. It wasn't a page with, here's the top 10 trivia questions from 1980. No, no, no. You want a beefy list. And this definitely checked that box. And then take a look at the structure of the content. Question, answer. So once you've sourced your trivia content, what the heck do you do with it all? That's step two. You scrape it, baby. Scraping. Web scraping, data scraping. Basically, you're firing up the dust buster. You're sucking off any text from a web page and putting it in a spreadsheet document. And this plugin for Chrome is a rock star. For one, it's free. And for two, it's supremely effective. And there is a video on the page in case you need a little more info on how to use this thing. Hey, I'm no data scraping expert, but once you install this, it'll live over here in the extensions tab in Chrome and you see instant data scraper. Before I enable it, let's uh, scroll right here so you can kind of get an idea of this web page. And then fire in the data hole. Okay, whammo bammo. What just happened? Well, let's pop out of the full screen mode so we could line up both these windows. If you look at the instant data scraper window, you'll see it created what looks like part of a spreadsheet. Unfortunately, this won't let us expand it, but I'll download this file and we'll open it up to show you that it's all there. So what this has done, and you could see this on the website, it has put a red border around an HTML table. So it identified a table on this web page. And within the table, the yellow shaded content is the text that it captured over here 
in the spreadsheet, which is incredible. So it sucked just the text off this page while ignoring the other page items, the setup text, the ads. That's incredibly valuable and a massive time saver. So let's download a CSV file. Okay. There we go. And then let's take a look. So it created a spreadsheet with the questions and the answers, each on a separate row. Now, ultimately, we have to do some editing and some adjusting for this to work within our workflow, but this is a good start. Okay, you may be thinking, yeah, that worked on your cherry-picked website, but what about other websites I find? You may stumble upon a site that doesn't list the question and the answer. They may force you to click a button to reveal an answer. Well, don't worry, because within the code, the answer's there. And this plugin is able to suss it out. Check this out. This is pretty incredible. This has created a spreadsheet with the question in one column. Second column is reveal answer, which we delete later on. And then the third column has our answers. This is great. Look at that. 121 trivia questions. Boom, just like that. We download this. So here's a site with more 70s trivia where the answers are blurred out. But don't worry, within the, the code on the page, they're there. An instant data scraper will find them with the click of a button. Boom. You have the question and you have the answer. Now, back to the tables we were talking about. So when I ran that plugin, it found this table, 70s TV trivia. But if you look at the page, there's a bunch of other options. There's general trivia. There's music trivia. Another option is if you click start crawling, look at this. It has now found all the tables and scraped the data into two columns, the question and the answer column, which is great. So once again, when you're in your sourcing phase, it's really key to find websites that are list-based. They just have one long scroll of text. That's where the web scraper plugin really shines. You're not having to go to the next page, load more. No, look for sites that lay out 100 plus trivia questions on one page. And that makes the whole process that much easier. Next up, you got to sheet it, which is so much more fun than saying, you must now prepare a spreadsheet. You take that CSV file that you downloaded, upload it to Google Drive, and then open it in Google Sheets. Now I get it. Some of you aren't the greatest friends of Google. That's fine then you find a way to work with it in your favorite spreadsheet editor. You can do a lot of this in Excel if that excites you. But once you open it in Sheets, this is what you're going to get. There's all your questions. Now, before we run a truly magical piece of code, I think it's best at this point to go line by line, question by question, and make any edits. Because ultimately, you're going to be transforming each one of these lines into a voiceover script that you send to the bots in the sky to read that script. So make sure it's written in a way that the bots will have the easiest time to pronounce and deliver in the most natural sounding way. I mean, they're never going to hit a home run because bots are bots, but we can help them get closer to a more natural delivery with some editing. So look for words that you know are going to trip a bot up and then spell them phonetically. Spell them in the way that they sound. And later on, I'll show you some examples of some big bot fails and how I tweak the scripts to get a better read from the AI voice. Like, for example, look at line 18. Progborn yawn hammer. Yawn. The first time I ran this through a bot, well, I think you know how they pronounce it. They said Jan. So this is something maybe you'd yawn. I mean, don't tell yawn that we spelled his first name. Ah. <sighs> And that solved the problem. So go through line by line, look for gotchas, look for words that you know are going to trip up the bots and fix them at this level. It'll save you a ton of time later on. And this is also a good opportunity to make edits because sometimes these trivia questions are written in a format that work well for the printed page, but not so much for the spoken word. So you may want to rewrite them to be more conversational. Sometimes acronyms trip up the bot. So this is uh, one of the situations where you may want to space this out NBA instead of NIBA. Look for opportunities for pronunciation. Sometimes adding a comma will insert a much needed pause to make a read sound more natural. Now that you're happy with your sheet, 
I've been waiting all video to say that. And if you think you could just send this over to your AI voiceover app and think it's going to make heads or tails out of it, well, cue the sound effect. Exactly. So we have to reformat this in a way that our make.com workflow will understand. So I have a magic formula that is waiting for you in the description. You take that magic formula into column B and you simply paste it. So expand this out so we can really see column B. And I, I know column A is encroaching on column B, but highlight in column B, row two, you see B2 up there, and you paste that formula. And oh my gosh, you better be in a seated position once I hit enter. Formula, enter, worlds being categorically rocked. Look at all that. You see what's happened? Utter computing magic. That's what's happened. It took the raw data of the question and the answer without even a space between the two. And look what that very complex formula has done. It's created a separate column for just the question. It's deleted the word answer and moved just the answer to its own column, column C. And it did it for every question and answer. That's great, but that's not enough. Because if you send this over to 11 labs to create the voiceover, it's just going to read the question and then read the answer. And that's kind of a fail in my book. You want to create a spectacle. You want to create a real trivia feature segment, which means you need to bridge from the question to the answer. You need an answer set up. So instead of just saying answer, Madonna, you now are tasked with writing some of your own custom answer setups. And if you look at column D, these are my answer setups. I think I came up with three or four different ones that I've just copy and pasted and rotated throughout the segment. You don't have to come up with a hundred different answered setups. Come up with three or four, so at least there's some variety. And place these answer setups in a separate column. Now, you're looking to the beginning and the end of the script, and you think, well, what's all that other code? Well, these are cues for 11 Labs, the app we're using to generate the AI voiceover. This is telling 11 Labs to insert a 0.6 second break silence before this voiceover and 0.4 seconds of silence after the voiceover. So that's giving you some pad between the question, the answer setup, and the answer. So that pad is really key to achieving a very natural read. So here if we zoom out, we could see the entire spreadsheet as it'll integrate with make.com. Our three separate columns, column B, the question, Column D, the answer setup. Column C, the answer. That's perfect. Step four is where a lot of the magic happens. You got to make it. And by make it, I mean use make.com to set up a incredibly cool workflow. Now, if you watch my video on creating AI-powered weather reports, this is very familiar. This is the exact same workflow that I used to create those weather reports. And I'd have to say at this point, it's required viewing because I'm not going to go deep into the mechanics of make.com in this video. So you really need to check that video out, which of course is patiently awaiting you up in the right-hand corner. And this trivia segment was really born from this AI weather idea using a similar workflow or what make.com calls a scenario. So step number one, after you create your make.com account, and yes, they do have a free option, which I'm using right now, is to create a new scenario. So what awaits is a blank canvas. So you click this to start adding modules. Specifically, we're looking for Google Sheets. Boom. And the Watch New Rows module. There you have it. Next up would be a Google Doc module. Specifically, create a document. So you can get a better idea of how all this works. Let's jump over to my trivia scenario. And here is the first half of the AI trivia scenario. Our first module tells make.com to watch for new rows appearing in a specific Google Sheet. And before you can do any of this, you have to first connect your Google account with make.com. And they make that very simple. Once again, my AI weather video dives much deeper into this. After you connect the module with your Google account, then you'll see something similar where my drive will appear. Then you have to point it to the specific spreadsheet with all your trivia data. For me, that's a spreadsheet that we just looked at called 80s Trivia. And you choose the sheet name. For me, I only had one sheet. Yes, the table does contain headers. And this is telling make.com, 
which rows have the headers. So for me, that's A1 to D1. I think it's smart to run smaller batches of this process instead of you know, setting the limit. Do 100 voiceovers at the click of a button. No, there is some handholding that goes on to ensure you get the most usable product. So I like to do smaller batches and then do quality control on those batches before moving on to the next set. Now the next module you'll create is a Google Docs module, specifically create a document. And this is what a empty module will look like, but let's open up the module I'm using so you can get a sense of how it connects with the other modules. So name. This is going to create a new document, basically a new script. Remember I mentioned each one of those rows in your spreadsheet will be turned into a script? Well, this is where it's all happening. So I'm telling it to name each document 80s trivia underscore then a custom name. Because if you just had a folder of 100 documents called 80s trivia, I mean, how helpful is that? You won't know the content of any of those documents based on that name. So the really cool thing about make.com is it can interact with other modules, other documents. So this naming configuration is text of my choice, but at the end, I'm telling it to take data from eight, you see here, Google Sheets, that's module eight. It allows me to pull in data from this previous module, Google Sheets, which is eight. Look down here, instead of having a long file name, which in includes the whole question text, I'm choosing to just bring in the answer. So I know, in this example, the script would be Batman. It would be 80s trivia underscore Batman. See how I dragged in that element? So this is column C from our trivia spreadsheet. Okay, that's how we name it. This is where it gets mind-blowingly awesome. Content. What is in your document? Well, you're writing the script based on the order of the columns and rows you bring in to this content field. For content, I'm saying I want you to first start the script off with a question, which is the B column in our spreadsheet, then go to what I call the answer setup, which is the D column, and then finish it up with the answer. So that's the format of the script, just by dragging and dropping those variables. Boom, done. Then where should we save this script? Well, my drive, and then I created a folder called Trivia. So this is the folder where the new document will be placed with this custom name we've given it, okay? Great. So now we have a script. And number five, time to script it. Before you fire off 100 scripts <laughs> to the AI bots, why don't you just make sure one or two actually are formatted properly? So to do that, what we wanna do, click on the wrench, unlink the Google Docs module. So you just wanna run the sequence from pulling data to the Google Sheets and creating a Google Doc, which is your script. Click Google Sheets, and I mean, two or three scripts are probably enough to make sure that it's working. Right click on the Google Sheets module, choose where to start and click all. That'll start from the top and then Click Run. You see it's writing the first script. Now it's writing the second. And from your incredible powers of deduction, yes, the third one's being created right now. Jump over to our Trivia Test folder, refresh it, and there are our three scripts. Let's proofread this, make sure we like it. Yep, there's a question. Here's the answer set up with our 11lab break code already embedded. And there's the answer. Looks good to me. As does this. Okay, we're good to go. So once we're happy with those scripts, we can continue on and connect this to the next module, which is another Google Docs module, but specifically get content of a document. So this is a pretty simple module. You're getting the content of a document by mapping. And specifically, you're pulling data from the module right before this module, the Google Docs create a document module, which and my scenario is number 10. You see 10 right there. I click here and I look for Google Docs, create a document 10, and I am looking for document ID. I drag that in and I hit OK. Aside from being a super high quality source for AI voice generated content, another reason I love 11 Labs is because it interfaces with make.com. 
there's an API where you can connect your account to this system. Without that, this workflow would not be possible. So you want to add the 11 labs module and specifically create a speech synthesis. So let's open up mine. You have to first connect this to your 11 labs account, which yes, there are free accounts at 11 labs. I've done lots of videos on them. You have to choose the voice you want to use. And this requires you doing some exploration over in 11 labs before you jump to make.com. And number six, voice it. This is where the fun meter starts pegging. We're going to jump into 11 labs to select our star voiceover artist. And you've got a lot of voice to choose from. This is totally subjective. You need to find the voice that best fits your station, your segment. But for me, Triple X 80s being an all 80s station. <laughs> Come on, duh. Natasha, the Valley Girl, totally gets the job. After you've selected the voice, now the quote-unquote fun begins, and you have to tweak the settings to get the right sound, to get the most natural read out of that voice. Full disclosure, this process is completely hit or miss. There's no science to these settings, really. You just have to keep sliding these setting sliders, hitting generate, letting your ears be your guide, and then tweaking a little more until you get just the sound you're looking for. And when fine-tuning your settings, just copy and paste a script into the text window and start tweaking. The opening of a crate and revealing a leg lamp is a pivotal scene in what 1983 holiday classic movie? And my 80s lovers, the answer is a Christmas story. Well, overall, I like that. I think we can make a couple tweaks. Let's add a comma in here just to give a slight pause. And I'm not digging how she's going up on classic movie. I don't like that questioning tone. So let's try a period instead and see what this sounds like. The opening of a crate and revealing a leg lamp is a pivotal scene in what 1983 holiday classic movie? And my 80s lovers, the answer is a Christmas story. Yes, bullseye. I'd hit that with my Red Ryder BB gun <laughs> in a second. That sounds great. So now you're at a crossroads. Do you go back into your spreadsheet and replace all the question marks with periods? Well, that's why we do some of this testing early on. And it's not as daunting as it would seem. I mean, you could just do a quick test, highlight the rows A through 7, come up here to edit, find and replace. We want to find question marks, replace them with periods. We actually have searching a specific range so you can enter in the range or just highlight them and we want to replace all so look here at the question marks whammo bammo we've replaced them with periods and I mean to be safe you can always make a copy of the document and make your changes in the copy but to me that did sound a whole lot better and then you remember these settings when you jump back over to make and the interim here in stability and similarity boost as well as the name of your voice, the voice engine that that voice uses. And for me, it's 11 Multilingual version 2. That's the one they recommend for Valley Girl. And most important, how are you getting your script to Natasha? Well, that's in this box. So you're saying, look to the Google Docs module, get content of a document, and send your AI voice bot just the text content. So you're sending the script to Eleven Labs, where Natasha is patiently waiting in her voiceover booth. Great. Now what do you do? Natasha records that, and what happens to that voiceover? Well, here's a chance for you to connect it to your Dropbox, a Google Drive, or even FTP it. So you connect your Dropbox account. You choose the folder where you want to send these files to. So Radio Trivia. And then you're telling it to move the file that 11 Labs creates to this folder. Okay, boom. If you wanted to go a step farther, you can actually FTP it to your radio station by creating a connection and linking up your FTP service to make.com. Now, there is a second part to the voice it step, and that's performing some audio processing on all your AI voiceover files. But before that, you got to go cook up these voiceover files. I'm not going to claim this is the best workflow. Because we've broken the chain between these modules, we've interrupted the current workflow. In order to make sure those test scripts that you previously generated are actually sent to 11 labs to be recorded, I think for safety, 
Come back over to your folder, delete those scripts, pop back to make.com, connect the modules, click on Google Sheets, and this is where you could start increasing the limit, the number of scripts you create at any one time. So let's say you wanted to do batches of seven or even 10. This is where you enter it. Choose where to start. We're saying start from the top. Let's say you do 10 and you end up with 10 acceptable voiceovers and you come back to rerun it and it does the same 10 again. Uh-oh, then what? Well, the then what is to adjust the start point. What row should it start back on in your spreadsheet? So choose where to start and then you can manually select the row that you want it to start up on again. So if we already did one, two, three, you see number four there. So if we clicked on five, hit OK, when we run this again, it will create 10 scripts starting from row five. So that's pretty cool. Just to show you how much time this could save you, let's start the clock and run the sequence. Okay, stop the clock. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Checking out our script folder. There's a script. Coming over to Dropbox, and there's the file. Originally given the Japanese name Puckman, what 1980s arcade game was inducted into the Guinness Book of Records as the most successful coin-operated game in 2005? And my 80s lovers, the answer is Pac-Man. Loving that. That sounds great. Back in make.com, run the scenario as many times as you need to to record all your trivia voiceovers. And feast your peepers on this. Our Dropbox is bulging with our AI voiceovers. And unlike a politician's YouTube channel, <laughs> no lies here, only the straight scoop. Not all your voiceovers are going to sound great. Based on its title, what actor was in charge as the main character on the 1980s CBS sitcom, Charles in Charge? Okay, 80s hotshot. The answer is Scott Bio. <laughs> I don't think Scott would approve of that pronunciation of his last name. We need to make some edits to the script and send it back through the system. And for all my redos, I've created a special folder within Dropbox, which helps you keep track of your updated voiceovers. So put your ear on the finished product of the Scott Bayo script change. Okay, that totally rad answer is Scott Bayo. I mean, not 100% and <laughs> don't expect 100% from any of these, but that's much better. Part two of the voice it step is audio processing, and this is key in getting the best on-air sound for your voiceovers. So I want you to take a listen to the raw voiceover. With Michael Cimbello's song Maniac on the soundtrack, what 1983 film stars Jennifer Beals as an exotic dancer whose dream is to become a ballerina? And my 80s lovers, the answer is Flashdance. Okay, that's the raw MP3 file from Eleven Labs, but this is the file that ended up on the air. You could see it's a much beefier waveform. Compression was added, levels were tweaked, some silence was removed. And I urge you to do some post-processing on all these files before they hit your ear. Going back to the original MP3, let me show you my workflow. And just to be clear, I'm using the very free and super cool audio app called Audacity. And under the Tools menu, they have some pretty rad functionality at your fingertips. You could create specific macros to save a bunch of time in your workflow. As you see here, I have a number of macros in the library. But for the trivia segment, I have a Process AI Trivia VO. And basically, what this macro is doing, and this video really can't be a deep dive into creating macros. If you search Audacity Creating Macros, I'm sure you'll find a bunch of tutorials. But what I'm telling this one to do is to select the entire waveform, run an effect called truncate silence. And the cool thing about this, you could enter the dB levels that you want to target, which is basically silence. So I put negative 50 dB. And then you set up a duration, which will tell this effect when to kick in. So anytime there's silence of 0.81 seconds or more, this effect will cut the 0.81 seconds of silence down to 0.3 seconds of silence, which is an acceptable amount of silence in human speech. And then I'm telling it to run one of my other macros for radio processing, and this one's doing a bunch of things. It's normalizing the file, it's adding a noise gate, it's compressing it, which is super important, and then it's adding this limiter 
to make sure nothing goes over negative 2 dB. Imagine having to do all that by hand, individual effects being applied to tracks. Oy! No, we definitely like hitting the easy button for this. And this macro is such a time saver. Now, just so you know, after I run this macro, the waveform will disappear because it's going to export it as a wave file and it's going to close the track and then in the macro. But where is it exporting to? Well, you set that under preferences under the edit menu. So if you go to directories and your preferences, you can designate the directory you want to put all your files in that have been created by a macro. So all my processed files are going into this VT80s trivia folder. Okay, let's run the macro and then applying process AI trivia VO. Buckle up. Whammo bammo. There it is. Much healthier waveform. It's trimmed a little of the silence and it's good to go. As for the levels, I want you to watch the meters up here so you can get an idea of the before and after. With Michael Cimbello's song Maniac on the soundtrack, what 1983 film stars Jennifer Beals as an exotic dancer whose dream is to become a ballerina? As you can see, they never really peaked under negative six, where compared to the processed file, you'll see much healthier and radio ready levels. With Michael Cimbello's song Maniac on the soundtrack, what 1983 film stars Jennifer Beals as an exotic dancer whose dream is to become a ballerina? And because of that hard limiter, we can rest assured it'll never exceed negative 2 dB. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, the macro saves a little time, but wow, I still got to open up every file and run that thing? You think I'd leave you hanging there? No way, baby. So you first have to close this file, go up to Tools, Apply Macro Palette, and you select the macro you want, which is Process AI Trivia VO, and you want to apply it to Files. For me, I have a folder called Trivia Raw, which includes the raw MP3s. Let's select just a couple. <laughs> and now it automatically is running the macro sequence. And boom, just like that, three of those files were processed. And in case you have doubts, ye of little faith, let's jump into the directory where we've told Audacity to park these files, macro output, and there you have it. These are the three files it just processed for us. So after you process all your files, it's smart to create a cleaner directory for them all with a name that makes sense. So all my files live in the VT, which stands for voice track, totally cheesy trivia folder. And this comes into play when we start importing the files into Radio DJ. And the final triumphant step is broadcast it, baby. And this is where we fire up Radio DJ to complete the loop and get our super cool trivia segment on the air. So step one is to open up Track Manager and create some new categories for your trivia segment. How I have it set up, it's under Jingles, which is kind of a clearinghouse for a lot of my stagers or intros to different feature segments. So under Jingles, I have a subcategory called Totally Cheesy Trivia. I wanted to keep this really simple. Just one subcategory for my production elements of this feature. But, I mean, you could just as easily, under Categories and Feature, create a subcategory called Trivia Game. You're the ultimate judge of how you want to categorize and name your segment. Because the parts of this feature are pretty simple. It's basically... This intro right here, Cheesy Trivia Opener, Category Jingle, Subcat, Totally Cheesy Trivia. And this is really key if you choose to run your segment like I do, where you have this open slash music bed. Totally Cheesy Trivia. With me, Triple X80's very own AI Valley Girl. And right there at the next start point, it'll trigger off our trivia question voiceover. And you'll see I have about 33 seconds of the game show style music bed to play under that voiceover. And since those voiceover cues never go more than like 16 seconds, that's always going to be plenty of music. But when you look at the waveform, you'll see right when that trivia music comes in, the waveform is much smaller. So the levels really dip down to accommodate the voiceover. So be mindful of that when you're producing an opener with a music bed to bring the levels down so your voiceover isn't competing with the music. Because I wanted to keep this simple, just create one subcategory, I'm using the genre selector to tag it with another piece of information. 
which I'll use later upon playback within a rotation. So the opener gets the genre remembers, and the second production element is the outro jingle, and it sounds a little something like this. Triple X 80s. So right after our AI trivia presenter reveals the answer, this outro file is triggered, and you'll see here uh, when it hits the next start after Triple X 80s, that will fire off the song. While the applause sound effects slowly fade out over the intro of the song, which creates a really nice smooth transition from the production element into the music. Okay, talking about the genre information, I have tagged the outro jingle with pop, and you'll see why in just a second. So let's close that up. And then you'll need to create a subcategory for the voice track, the AI voiceover. So for me, that's under categories, voice tracks, subcategory 80s trivia. That's where all those files are going to. And if you want to look at how all of our trivia voiceover files look, let's just randomly open one here. Because I've used a folder sync, the track type is variable duration file. And you'll see here, very important, overlay file is checked. Because if this isn't checked, oof, you got a massive train wreck on your hands. So let's set up a folder sync to quickly and easily import all those files into your system. So we know we want to put them in the category of voice tracks, subcategory 80s trivia, genre really doesn't matter, track type should be variable duration file. This is important because they all are going to have different run times. And if you've done your audio processing before you bring these voiceover files in and you've trimmed excess silence at the end, then you won't have to go through the laborious process of setting next start points for all these voiceover files. So whatever you trim your audio to in Audacity or whatever audio editor that you dig, that'll basically be your out cue point. Now you have to tell Radio DJ which folder to look into to find these files. And for us, we know it's in the VT, which is voice tracks, and voice track 80s trivia. VT, totally cheesy trivia. Okay. So, boom. We've set up this folder sync. And we could either choose to sync it now or set up an event to run it on a schedule. Okay. Brace yourself, all you codophobes. We have to write a very simple line of SQL code to change the status of all those voiceover files into overlay files. So, to do this, you open up Notepad. And then, boom. I want you to copy and paste the code that I've included in the description. And let's walk you through what this is doing. This is saying, update the songs database, where everything groovy on your station lives, set the overlay variable to one, meaning on, where, and these are the conditions that have to be met for any of this to happen, song type is seven, which is variable duration file, has to be enabled, and the ID subcategory is 136 for me, that's the cheesy trivia subcategory. And count played is zero. Because if you routinely import these files, it's just affect the ones that are new. And the code knows they're new if they've never been played before. So that's why we include that. You save this. I'm, I'm saving it into the Radio DJ SQL rotation examples folder, but you could save it anywhere you want. Trivia VO query one dot SQL. Very important to add dot SQL to the file name. Save it. And then there it is, right there. And jumping back to Radio DJ, we could create an event. Let's call this, I'm just going to put an A here so it comes up first. VO Trivia Overlay. It's a manual event. And here's what we want it to do. First, we want to select a plugin action. And the action that we're choosing is Folder Sync, okay? You may not need to do this. I like to add a wait command of like, wait three seconds, just so it gives it plenty of time to sync everything up before it runs this SQL code. So you want to run a SQL query, and then you have to tell it where that piece of code lives. And then we know it's in SQL rotation examples, and there it is right there. Add the action. So it's going to do a folder sync. It's going to bring in all your voiceover files. Wait three seconds. Then... It'll run the code to transform all those voiceover files into overlay files. Add the event, close it up, 
And then over in Manual Events, you just click the button, and then it'll, it'll run your folder sync and the overlay file code. Not too shabby. Whew, you need a minute? <laughs> Wipe your brow, take a sip of your favorite beverage? You've come a long way. You're doing great. Now, how the heck do we get this nonsense on the air? There are a couple ways to do it. I'm a big believer in rotations. So this is just a test rotation. Let's say we want to add it to the bottom of this rotation. So I'm going to choose track from category. And we already know it's a jingle. And it's total cheesy of trivia. And this is where the genre comes in. This is key. If you remember, the opener to this segment we designated as remembers genre. Okay? So this is how you get more bang out of a subcategory's buck. So we could tell it, look in this subcategory for all the files with the remembers genre, which there's only one, the open. Okay, we like that. Next up, we need the voiceover. Drag from category, voice tracks, 80s trivia, genre doesn't matter, least recently played, that's important. So it cycles through all your files evenly. And then we want to close it up with the outro, which we know is jingles, Totally cheesy trivia. And if you remember, the genre for the outro was pop. And then if we want to put a, another 80s song in after that, I've duplicated a, an 80s top 40 song from above. And there we go. There's our sequence. Of course, the other way to do this is within an event. So keep in mind when you're building event actions, the playlist will load them from the top down. So you have to think about what's the last element in my sequence. And that's what you start with. So for us, it's the totally cheesy trivia outro jingle, which, this is key, was from the pop genre, least recently played. That's fun. We're adding that action. Next up, the middle element is the voiceover. So the voice track, 80s trivia, that's great. Least recently played, perfect. Add that action. And then, what's the first track to be loaded in this sequence? And that is the open jingle, which had the genre of remembers. And right there, that's our event sequence. Let's add the event. Okay, let's refresh our manual events and let's kick this thing into gear to see it in action. 80s trivia, boom. There's the open, there's the voiceover, and there is the outro jingle. So let's kick this AI trivia segment into gear. Here's how it sounds. Totally cheesy trivia. With me, Triple X 80's very own AI Valley Girl. With Michael Cimbello's song Maniac on the soundtrack, what 1983 film stars Jennifer Beals as an exotic dancer whose dream is to become a ballerina? And my 80's lovers, the answer is Flashdance. Triple X 80's. A buttery, smooth execution and a super fun interactive feature for your listeners to play along with. Now, full disclosure, I kind of did have to hold the bot's hand a while and get involved to ensure some quality control because some of the reads were just too robotic they weren't natural sounding enough and after all this is your brand this is your station and it's as only good as it sounds so i did kind of have to go in and tweak the prompts in a way to get the most natural output from the AI voice. But it was totally worth that investment of time because this is a segment that's gonna run for a while on this station and it has to sound good. And there are a lot of directions you can run with this idea. Don't just think it has to be, you know, a one and done trivia segment. Maybe it's a conversation starter. Maybe it's a contest where the AI voice delivers a question, but then you solicit responses from your listeners. So that gets them engaged, gets them participating. Maybe you have a prize to offer. Maybe you're driving listeners to your website. They're filling in a form. You're collecting information. You're building your list. That's all a good thing. And if this has sparked a fresh idea for you, maybe you're gonna run with this workflow, but in a different direction. Oh, I'd love to hear about it. Please share your creative musings in the comments below. I'm Jeff, the radio DJ dude, and I am super appreciative of your time. And if you'd be so kind as to click those magical buttons, like and subscribe, woo, it would give me such a thrill. 
God, I really need to get out more. And until we meet again, please just do me this one solid and keep rocking those mics all over the world.